r slash stories. The time an actual murderer tried to kill me and I survived. It wasn't some hardened criminal, or a scary looking skinhead or a badass gangster. It was a little old woman, but she was a legit killer. She'd shot her husband in the chest with a shotgun two years prior to me meeting her. She did not do any jail time because she had numerous witnesses that had confirmed her story of self-defense. The rumor around the hood told a different tale but regardless, she had truly killed a man and the shotgun that leaned in the corner of her foyer was probably the murder weapon. Anyway, I met this woman at the height of my drug addiction. I'm sober now, going on six years, but at the time I did opioids. My favorites were Percocets. A fellow junkie happily informed me that we had a promising new plug who sold her 70 pill prescription each month, Miss Coco. I go to the address the very next day and realize this woman lived only a few streets down from my homegirl Selena. I stopped by her place first to say hi. When she asked me why I was in the neighborhood I told her I was coming to see Miss Coco and her expression changed. That's when I learned not only the story of the murder, but a bunch of other crazy stories about shit she'd done to people in the hood. Selena begged me to be careful. I'm like, whatever, it's an old woman. I ain't scared. I slide over to the address of this little shotgun house and knocked on the door. She was supposed to be expecting me. The door cracked barely open and I saw how short and old she was. All I could really see was a slice of her face and one of her bloodshot eyes. She asked my name, I told her and she opened the door for me, motioning for me to enter. Right away I saw the gun leaned in the corner. She told me to follow her and I finally got a real good look. She was so feeble looking, not skinny, but short and hunched over and walked with a cane. Her head was wrapped in a silk bonnet and she was wearing something like a moo moo. Diabetes had taken part of her left foot. We're in the living room now and she asked me to sit down. I chose the only empty spot on the couch, the entire house was cluttered, but not dirty. Suddenly, an oddly placed rug on otherwise bare floors made me wonder how hard it was to get blood out of wooden floorboards. Did Selena say she actually killed that guy in here? She offered me a drink and a snack. She looked at me with surprisingly kind eyes. What a strange drug deal I thought, but how sweet of her. I remember thinking Selena was foolish for buying into all the hood tales of how dangerous this woman was. I drank a soda, declined a snack, and purchased her entire script of pain pills. She'll be getting it filled again on the same day next month, she informed me. Okay, great, see you then. I returned on a routine schedule for several months, always drank a soda, declined a snack, and went happily on my merry, intoxicated way. I even got to know her a bit during my visits, her diabetes, her kids, how helpful weed was for her pain. I brought her a joint to share here and there. I even helped her move some furniture one day. Never a mention of her late husband though, and I wasn't going to ask. I had long forgotten any sort of wild ideas about this old, sweet woman possibly snapping at any moment. One summer month, it was my day to go to Miss Cocos. My boy Shane was with me already so I decided to let him ride along. We show up, go inside, same routine as always. She looked at him somewhat suspiciously, but I told her he was good people and she allowed him in. During our little chat, Shane mentioned something about wanting to see a movie that had just come out. I cannot for the life of me remember which movie. Miss Coco got excited and told us she happened to have a bootleg of that exact movie that we could borrow. She let us look through a giant stack of bootleg, burned DVDs and borrow whatever we wanted. We took three of them and she simply asked that we return them when we were done. That night we decided to watch the one Shane had wanted to see, so we popped it into the player at my place. Immediately it was unwatchable. It seriously looked like a cell phone video. You could see people in the theater walking around in front of the screen. The guy filming was talking loudly to his date the entire time. Garbage. We laughed about it, assumed the other two were just as bad and watched something else. A few days later I was going to hang with Selena, so I figured I'd swing by and return the DVDs to Miss Coco. I tried calling, but she didn't answer. I walked up to the doorstep and knocked, but still no answer. I figure, no big deal, I'll just leave them here by the door for her. She had a storm door that had a screen on the top half, and was solid metal on the bottom half. I opened that door, propped the shitty DVDs up against her actual door, and then closed it. That way they couldn't be seen, and were protected from the weather as well. I go on to Selena's place and don't give it a second thought. Later that night I'm getting high with my friends and my phone starts ringing. I'm seriously faded so I just decide to ignore it, 
I don't feel like talking. It rings again, and again. Finally, my homie is like, You gonna answer that? So I pulled out my phone to check it. It was Miss Coco. She never calls me, ever, especially not late at night. Having her number in my phone was strictly for the purpose of me calling her on the 12th of each month to announce what time I'm coming over. That's it. Today was only the 9th. I thought maybe something bad had happened and she needed help. I called back and she picked up before it even rang one time. She was furious. I mean, absolutely livid. She did not sound like the little old lady whose couch I chill on. She was extremely pissed about the fact that I had left her DVDs in the door. She lectured me about how a dumb ass white person like me just doesn't understand how things work in the hood. Someone could have seen me leave them there and could have come behind me and stolen them. I should have waited until she was home. I was disrespectful and rude and ungrateful, she went on and on. I didn't have an attitude in my voice, and I did apologize, but I also mentioned that even though I appreciated the gesture, the movies were really pretty terrible and not worth anything. Abruptly, and very eerily, her tone changed. Suddenly, she was sweet old Miss Coco again. She told me I was right and she was just a little on edge that night. She apologized for her reaction and told me I was good to her and didn't deserve that. Then, she says, as a matter of fact, she got in her script early this month. She picked it up earlier today. Why don't I come on over and get it tonight? Now, any sane, sober person would have immediately noticed red flags here, but in my infinite knotted out wisdom, I thought Junkie Jesus had performed a miracle for me and that my night was about to get even better. Time to get extra faded bros, I'll be back with more goodies ASAP. I head off down the street to Coca's house. I'm still very, very high. I'm walking up to the house and I see that the DVDs are still there. Coco opens the door before I even get on the step and tells me to pick up the movies and bring them inside. Her voice was stern, which was unlike her, but she didn't sound crazy like she had on the phone. I bring them into the living room where I always go to sit, and something is just off. The hairs on the back of my neck stand up. I realize she's still behind me, in the foyer area. She starts telling me the same thing she was saying on the phone, but calmly this time. My back is still to her. I don't say a word. I set the DVDs onto a side table and despite being extremely inebriated, finally realize that I'm definitely not here to pick up pills. A temporary sobriety of the survival instinct variety kicked in all at once. Everything just sort of clicked into such a clear, crisp vividness that I'll never forget. I knew she was standing exactly where the shotgun leans. I knew she was between me and the door. I knew that she wanted to kill me, and I knew that she already had a whole gang of local folk ready to corroborate whatever story she came up with. Every single detail that Selena had described to me the day she warned me about Miss Coco played through my mind in a matter of seconds. I ran. I burst out the back of the living room, knocking over that stack of fucking bullshit bootlegs as I scrambled past it. I'll be honest, once I had found my way out the back door, I wasn't that scared anymore. It's not like she was going to catch me. I circled back around the tiny house and took off down the street, probably before she even managed to hobble around and look out of the front door for me. I never did see if she actually picked up the gun. My back was to her, and I made the decision to run without even turning around, but I just knew. It. I felt it. It was a feeling I won't soon forget. The scary part was knowing just how absolutely mind-numbingly high I was, and how oblivious I was, until the very last second. And that's the story about how. I was almost taken out by a crazy little old lady with a shotgun, over the world's shittiest bootleg DVDs. Makes you wonder what small infraction her late husband committed. Yes, this is a true story and I have lots more drug-fueled, wild encounters if any of you would like to hear more. Bye-bye.